Um, my first book, After the Fire, A Still Small Voice, um, has three male voices. Um, my second book, All the Birds Singing, um, has a, a singular female voice. Um, I think when I was, I started to write the second book, I was conscious that I didn't want to do another male voice. Um, and that, but that was really my only, um, my only reason for choosing a woman. It wasn't, it, it was just that I wanted to do something different to what I'd done before. Um, and I think I found it a bit harder writing a female voice. There's a nice distance that comes with um, writing a male voice. There's, um, in the same way that I find it easier to write about Australia when I'm in England than I do when I'm in Australia, um, you can allow yourself to completely give yourself over to that character if, if you can kind of just acknowledge that they are nothing to do with you. And obviously, as a female voice, um, comparisons are always going to be made with me, and, and it's also first person whereas the first book was in third person. So it all got very, very close to me. Um, and that was very difficult to write about. The structure of the novel with um, the present um, happening in about a month and then the, the past happening over a, a number of years and moving backwards through time from Jake's most recent memories of Australia back to her childhood. Um, that really came about because I'd written both strands. Um, they were much larger then and it was lacking something. It was, it was too easy um, and I often find that when things are flowing a little bit too well um, they become a bit dull and I wanted to problematise the text a bit. Um, I really enjoy making the reader uh, take a leap of faith and, um, and I, I trust that readers can do that, that they can bring themselves to the novel. Um, and I think that's one of the beautiful things about reading and about writing is that every single person who reads it will have a totally different image in their head of what the people look like, what the landscape looks like. And then also um, a different reaction to um, the events that are happening depending on their, their life experience so far. So for me, um, that's why the structure is like it is. It's because I wanted to leave gaps and because I wanted to build attention. Um, it was really difficult to do, it turned out. It, at first it seemed very simple. It was just run one um, strand backwards. Um, but then towards the end it became more like a maths problem. So I had to, I had to have a table where I wrote down everything that happened um, in the backwards chapters. And, and then as it, as it got closer to the crescendo, I had to leave out certain bits, I had to cut out big chunks because they just didn't fit with the format anymore. And I think that's, um, I think that's a really useful tool when you're writing. It's, it's a bit like Murder Your Darlings, it's, it's anything too easy, anything that you're too pleased with, you might need to just play around with it a bit. Um, so yeah, it was, it was very difficult to do towards the end, exhausting. <laughs> I do leave a lot um, of freedom for readers. Uh, I leave a lot out um, and it's up to the reader to decide how it ends and you know what, what the thing is that's killing the sheep. Um, and I think really that's to do with trusting readers. Um, and I, I think some, some readers don't enjoy that at all and that's fine and that's just not the book for them. Um, but some people find it um, sort of freeing and, and really when I'm writing a book I'm trying to write a book that I would like to read and for me I, I love that freedom, I love that when the, when the book finishes um, you're still thinking about it, you haven't been told what the outcome is, you haven't been told that 
this is where it this is where the story ends for certain um, that you would still continue to think about those characters and wonder what they're up to and wonder if they're okay um, and I hope I leave a bit of hope for for Jake and for Lloyd um, but just enough that you know that they can go on and have a life what kind of life is is entirely up to you Winning the 2014 Miles Franklin um, is one of the most amazing points of my career so far. Um, if not the, you know, apart from just being published. Um, it's, it's been a, a prize that I followed since I was quite young. Um, and it's actually the only prize that I've actively, I sort of seek out. Um, the, the past winners and shortlisters have been the, the people that I've learnt off who have taught me to write, really. Um, and it's a funny thing, it's a, it's a mixture of feeling incredibly humbled to have won it. Um, and um, I suppose there is a little bit of feeling jaunted um, because it's got such a huge history. Um, but really, I think the pressure that a writer feels writing a novel, it, it can't really be greater than the, the sort of monkey of self-doubt that sits on your shoulder when you're writing and sort of says, this is no good and no one's going to want to read it. Um, so I can't write any faster. I, I can only write what I write. Um, so in a way, the pressure doesn't make a difference. Um, I want to write a, a good third novel, um, but I would want to anyway.